All right, we got a few more things coming together here. I had to go do my taxes yesterday, so my boy Jeremy's been down at the shop getting some of the aluminum stuff primered. When you spray paint these engines, if you don't put a self-etching primer on the aluminum parts, the paint doesn't stick. And we're not doing like a really good proper paint job, but we can throw a bit of primer on there and at least fix that up. Make it so that it'll stay on the aluminum. So that's how we're looking so far. Right now he's just painting some scissor lift brackets. These are for the platform control boxes. It extends down so that you have your railing, it, it bumps up against the railing here so that these control boxes don't flip out all the time. Makes it a little easier on the cables. Then we'll drill holes in them and put clamps on there for the control cables so that when the guys, when they step on them, it doesn't rip it out of the bottom of the box anymore. This is on the mech scissor lifts, they're bad for that. Okay, so we got a little bit of foolery to deal with on this oil rail. These are your injector tubes that feed the high pressure oil into the injectors. And these ship with three different backup rings for those guys right there. And I have these sorted out already in their sizes. So these ones are 1.7 millimeters roughly. These ones, 1.6. And these are the small ones, they're about a millimeter, okay? Okay, so de to determine which size of backup ring you need on those, you have to measure that groove and then they give you a chart for that. So if we measure this out, we've got about 4.4 millimeter groove. Okay, so let's have a look at our chart. So the chart says if you have a 4.42 millimeter groove, then you need the 1.1 millimeter backup ring. Okay, so now I can tell you from that that the backup rings that were in here are not correct because these are very fat and these are very thin. These are the 1.1 millimeter ones. So you can kind of see how these are all peeled back like that. They shouldn't be looking like that. And if I measure this, these would be the 1.7 ones probably. They're just a little squished up from being jammed in there, but these are not the right backup rings that they had in there. That's okay, I will fix it. But the lesson there is that you can't just always look at your old parts and say, oh, well, this is the right one and put it in there. You gotta check that stuff. Because if I put the wrong ones in there and I go and slam this thing down and squish it on and I, I bust one of those or crack a tube or, or break one of those o-rings now i got a big high pressure leak doesn't matter who put the wrong ones in there this is my fault now so when you're doing these jobs guys pay attention to details so i'm going to take and put these one millimeter backup rings on All right, so you saw me when I put this on here, what I was doing was I was tightening the bolts on the back half by hand while I was rocking this thing. And 
Uh, I got it pretty tight that way, but it wasn't wanting to seat right into those injectors, but you don't really want to pull it in with the bolts. That's always a bad idea, because if you get any, any amount of force on those rings, it'll just, it'll just pull them out of there and pull them back on those backup rings and O-rings. So then what I was doing was, while I was wiggling it, I was just taking a ratchet and just lightly turning the bolt in. Like I just about could do it by hand, but not quite. Not, there's not enough of a head on these bolts to grab onto, but with the ratchet I was able to do that. So just by wiggling it back and forth and working those bolts and slowly tightening it while wiggling it, it just settled right into those injectors and, and it came on nice and flat. So I was very happy with the way that installed. Then uh, torqued these all up to 20 pounds of feet with the old 3.8 Ford dyno. Now what I'm going to do is the injection pressure control sensor, IPC sensor here. This engine had all kinds of starting issues and different stuff and I never got to plug into it and diagnose anything. I have no idea so I have to be thorough. It's a bit of a pain to get the valve cover off and get all the stuff out of the way to get in here to change this sensor. So I bought a new sensor. I'm going to put the new one in now and that way if there's any issues with getting this engine running later, I'm not going to have to tear into this thing and try and fix some of the stuff that's on the inside. So let me grab that sensor. And I bought an actual international sensor for this one because uh, take two. And I bought an actual international sensor for this one even though they are very expensive because ICP is kind of an important deal and again it's hard to get in and change it. You're usually better off with OEM on sensors so I just got them a good proper international one and hopefully for the rest of the time that they run this truck they will never need to worry about uh, changing this again. I have changed these a couple times before but I don't know if I can say that was ever actually solved the issue that I was chasing. They always just often have me do this as a preventative when you're already in here dealing with whatever issue. Okay. The old one I'm just gonna put back in the box and that can go back to the customer as a spare if they want it. There we go.
Okay, so we're supposed to set the Ford Dino to 20 foot-pounds and then torque them in sequence. I'm missing that bolt because that's where the EGR cooler goes and it has its own bolt that goes through there, so I'll do that one later. Next one is 40 foot-pounds and as you likely noticed, it's just a circle pattern is what they're looking for. And then 60, most manifolds torque in a circle pattern from the inside out. And last is going to be 80. There, exhaust manifolds on. So just before we stick the oil pan on there where those joins are right there and right there, they want us to put some uh, silicone or right stuff or something around there. So I got two there, I got those two covered right there, and then in the back, they want you to do there and there, and then the rest is taken care of by the pan gasket. There, we got this guy sitting back down on his paws. We got the oil pan on, new gasket, all torqued up, and a little bit of sealer in those couple um, places there where it needs to be. Starting to look like a motor again, which is kind of nice. Next, I'm going to put a brand new valve cover gasket in here slash wiring harness, because the injector wiring harness and valve cover is all one piece on these ones. And I'm replacing it because inside these plugs is all oily. And so we got, we got oil working its way past, which means the seal is no good anymore. And we got a few places where the wiring harness is broken, uh, like the insulation on the wiring, like there and there. Here's another one. There's a whole bunch of spots like that. So we're just gonna put a, a brand new one on there. And once that's done, then I'm gonna take some break-in oil and slosh it in all on the top here so that the whole top end is really well lubricated. And then we can drop the valve cover back on and torque him up. And then the engine is Pretty much closed up, except for the rear main seal. Oh yeah, and this uh, oil pump. I ordered a brand new oil pump for it because the old one, the gears were scored and the housing was scored. Here's a picture of the two pumps, that the old one and the new one. And the new one is not right. You know how it goes. Things that are different are not the same. So I'm waiting for a new oil pump yet. That's gonna go on here once I get the right one. And then this will be all closed up. And then the only thing I got left is a few more bolt-on pieces for the outside. Some of this stuff needs to get cleaned yet. Some of it needs to get painted yet, but we'll get that all on there.
Okay, so I got my wiring harness all in there. The gasket doesn't sit down quite as nice as I'd like to see it, but once the valve cover is on there and the bolts are holding everything in place, it's never gonna be a problem. That's gonna seal up nice. I'm not a big fan of these electronic engines, but you gotta admit that wearing harness does look kind of cool up there. Okay, let's get the valve cover on. There, that's it now. We're gonna put this one to bed and go home for the day. It's getting a little dim out there, so let's go home time. I think we made quite a bit of progress in this video. So we'll end it here, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thank you for watching, really appreciate it, guys.